Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to share with you more techniques to get the most out of your press plates. I've done a few of these and I have more ideas in my head and I just have to get them out. So I have this brand new Floral View Better Press Plate that I just got and I wanted to try a few of the different ideas I had. So the first one, I'm going to just use it as normal simply because I want to just see it printed basically. So I'm using Better Press cardstock and I'm taping it on the clear plate. And then I'm going to use Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. I didn't want the dark black. I wanted something that was a little bit lighter. So I'm pressing that on there. And while I press it on there, I'm doing a little bit of a twist, making sure it's inked nice and well putting the clear plate on the base and then putting it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine for the pressure and to press that um, print really in. Now I love this all over background. I've looked at this since the Better Press came out and kept resisting and finally couldn't. And I love the print it created. And I also love the lighter color with the hickory smoke rather than the black. I'll do it in the black in a little bit, but I like it with that gray. So I'm also doing the sentiment that comes with it. I am going to die cut that sentiment. So I put it in the bottom corner, trying to leave a much or leave room for the die, but have it printed. And I did it in that same hickory smoke ink. Now to die cut it, I'm going to tape that die in place just to make sure that that doesn't shift in any way. And I have a I have many ideas for this video or ones that I wanted to try with this plate. So this video kind of jumps around. I'm not going to complete any of the cards until later on in the video. Right now, I'm just kind of creating some components and trying to get some ideas out there. Most of the time when I do videos with these plates, I have a clear idea of exactly what I want to do. And this one, it, my brain was all over the place this day. So I just creating some components. So the next thing I wanted to try is something that I did in my last Better Press video, but I wanted to ink it. So I'm embossing this plate because I think it's going to look really cool. And I inked it with that same hickory smoke ink, put my Better Press cardstock on there, and then put the flexible rubber mat that came with the Spellbinders as well as the embossing plate. Now this is the same stacking that comes with or that is written on the Spellbinders plates for embossing a die cut. And I love how this looks. It looks like a quilt. I love that extra dimension that you get from embossing it as well as inking it. To be honest, this is one of my favorite things from this video. I just can't get enough of it and I keep looking at it because I just love all that texture and dimension. Now with the extra cardstock from that piece that I die cut the sentiment, I'm going to die cut some flowers. I have this flower stems die that I also got for Christmas. Actually, I got two of them because my daughters didn't communicate with each other. So I'm going to die cut some flowers with that extra cardstock and put it to the side. Now, the third thing I wanted to do with this video is I wanted to try a combination of foiling and better press. So I have the sentiment from the set. I put it on some hammer mill cardstock. I am going to foil it with prism foil. It's my favorite foil. It's a silver that has a holographic glow to it and putting it on my glimmer machine, pressing the timer. And once that timer is done, I put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. Now, especially with this sentiment, because it's such a small piece and I wanted to make sure it didn't shift, I did tape everything down. While I'm letting that cool for a few seconds, I have another piece of foil and I'm going to foil that Floral View Better Press plate with that same prism foil, hammer mill cardstock. I put it on my machine waiting for the ready button to light up and then pressed the timer machine. Once that was done, put it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 for the pressure. You need the heat as well as the pressure in order to do the foiling. Now, while I have my glimmer machine out and hot, I'm pulling out the hot or the solid hot foil plate and I'm going to do the solid hot foiling as well. I love how this background looks with that foil and this is what I had kind of envisioned the whole time. I really thought this background would be gorgeous done in foil and I love the fact that we can do both of them. So for the solid hot foil plate, I stacked it exactly the same way as the better press plate, just using the solid plate instead of the press plate stacked it all up, pressed my timer button, and once that went off, put it through my Platinum 6, and there we have the solid hot foiled image. 
while I have my machine out, I'm cutting a piece of masking magic in the shape of the die that comes with this. And this is the die that's intended to <clears throat> die cut the sentiment. And I will put it over top of my foiled image from the sentiment. Now, when I was doing, or when I was placing the foiled image here, I wasn't thinking. I was thinking that we're gonna have a mirrored image and so I put it on the wrong side of the cardstock or basically the side that I didn't really want it on. So I do redo it off screen, but at this moment I wanted to see what it would look like with the foil as well as the better pressed image. I wanted you to see the combination of the two. So I have that piece of masking magic over top of my foiled sentiment and I'm putting my press plate in the better press I'm going to ink it with the Better Press ink and it's going to ink all around that part that's not masked. Now, there's no way to avoid it. I'm going to get the impression of the Better Press plate over top of the foiling. Um, it's very subtle because I'm using hammer mill cardstock here, so it's not as thick as the Better Press ink or the better press paper is but there's no way to avoid it that image is going to be pressed in there the only way to avoid it would be to do a separate piece and layer it on top but I was curious how it was going to look with the two on the same piece of cardstock and I like the way it looks you'll see later I do change something up but I will show you show you that towards the end of the video now I want to take all of the ink off my press plate so I'm just using some archival ink cleaner and then a soft cloth just to get that off. I don't know what I'm gonna be using this plate for next, so I wanna make sure it's clean for the next time I go to use it. Now, my first image that I did, the Hickory Smoke ink on the Better Press cardstock, I'm going to die cut it with some matting dies. I have the A2 layers set B, I believe. Yes, Matting Basics set B from Spellbinders, and I'm creating some mats to go on the front of my card. Now, you could do this with a trimmer, no problem. I just really like the way it looks with dies. I like the finished cut look that they give. And that happy accident that I had there, that really thin gray outline, I'm going to be using it in one of the cards. It's not something that I had planned ahead of time. Again, happy accident. I just really love the way it looked and it looks really cool on the card. So while I have those pieces for the cards ready, I'm going to glue my flowers. These are the ones that were done with the Better Press cardstock. I'm just using some Barely Art glue and a fine tip bottle so that I can put the glue exactly where I want it to go. And I'm going to let that glue dry before I start to color my flowers. You could leave them plain, but I don't think they would pop off the card quite as much if they were left plain. And I'm gonna do a few of these the flowers in the video and I will ink them in different ways. So the first one I'm doing distress inks. I have some detailed blending brushes here. They're nice and small. These ones come in three different sizes so I can choose the size based on the area that I'm going to do and I can um, get really detailed. I can get into basically just the areas I want to ink. I don't have to worry about large brushes that are spreading ink over areas that I don't want it to go. Another alternative to this would be would have been to use my dyes with some solid colors of cardstock. I just like the ink blended look a little bit better because it just gives a little bit more detail, a little bit more dimension. And um, I like things that are not necessarily just a solid color, especially when it comes to die cuts and things like this. Now, at this point, I realized I remembered basically that I had just bought this grip mat and I thought it might be good for holding that die cut down a little bit while I was inking them. Now, because these are ink or die cuts that have been glued and there's several different layers, it doesn't hold them perfectly, but it holds them enough that I can free one of my hands up a little bit and the die cut isn't moving as much. So it comes in handy for that. And these detailed brushes are perfect because I can get exactly the amount of ink that I want to get on these flowers. I can go back in. I'm trying to use as few colors as possible here. I, um, at times, try to limit how many supplies that I'm using because I don't want it to be like a thousand. So for the first one, I did the distress inks. For the second one, I'm going to use these Karen Pro Brush markers that I have gotten recently, and I'm going to use it with a watercolor brush. I'm putting the color down, blending it out with my watercolor brush. 
And you can see using this grip mat isn't perfect. It is moving around a little bit as I'm watercoloring it. But part of the reason for that is because these die cuts are multi-leveled because they're glued together. So it's not one flat surface sitting on that grip mat. It's still very helpful and it's a lot easier than just having it on my glass mat there. And these brush markers are really easy to blend together. I just have a few colors here that I'm using, coloring them down and then blending them out. This is the, still the better pressed paper. I didn't use watercolor cardstock for this, but you certainly could. And you could also uh, watercolor these ahead of time before gluing them together. They would definitely stick on the mat a little bit better that way. But I had already glued them together and hadn't really thought the entire thing through. So I'm going to glue my first card together. I have a gray piece of cardstock that I'm using for a mat around my better pressed image here. I'm gluing it all together with some Barely Art glue and a fine tip bottle. That way I can get as much detail on the glue as possible, especially for the floral die cuts. For a lot of these cards, I'm using different sized mats with them. It's just what I felt like doing for each particular card. And the second one that I'm doing, I don't even have a mat around the better pressed image because that is the one that's embossed and I loved it. So here is the first card. Very, very simple. I didn't even put a sentiment on this one. I typically like to wait for my sentiments until I know what I'm going to use the card for. And that way I can customize it to whatever the, that occasion is. So this is the embossed image here and because I love it so much and it's so pretty I decided not to even cut it down to create mats so I'm gluing it right to the front of the card it's four and a quarter by five and a half so it's going to cover the whole front of that card but I just love the dimension it to me it reminds me of a cozy quilt I'm taking the sentiment that was better pressed and then die cut and I'm putting it to the lower right side and I have it a little bit off the edge of the card and then that thin gray mat that happened when I did the die cutting of the Matting Basics die set, I'm going to use it on this card and it's going to just create a border around the whole thing. Now, because this mat is very, very thin, I do have to fiddle with it a little bit to get perfect placement. Any place that that glue happens to be when I move it, you don't see it. It dries totally clear. So I don't see on the finished card, I don't see any glue anywhere you would never know that there was um, glue or that I had to fiddle around to get the perfect placement. But you definitely want to do that because if it's not placed perfectly, it's going to pretty much ruin your card. I'm going to put an acrylic block on top of it just to hold it down for a few minutes while I'm gluing it in place. Originally, that second flower that I created there was going to go on this card, but I liked it so much this way. I thought it looked very simple, uh, but beautiful. And I thought that that flower kind of ruined it. While it may look nice with a brighter image, I just liked it this way and didn't want to mess with that. So for the third card, I'm taking another die cut flower. This one I die cut out of um, just some hammer mill cardstock. And then I'm going to use the Cloud9 interference inks with them as well as some black distress ink. So I've used these interference inks a few times. They look, one pad looks different that on black than it does on white. And you can see on the lids of each one of these pads, there's one that goes from gray to purple, one that goes from green to purple, one that goes from pink to kind of like a periwinkle color. I'm going to use them on different parts of the flower, but I did take a detailed blending brush and use some black distress ink to do a little bit of shading so that I get the best of both worlds with these pads and I get both of the colors. So the pads that I'm using for this one, the Cloud9 pads, one, the first one there was called Regal Gray. This one here with the green is called Magic Garden. And the one at the, or now the one that I'm using is called Tropical Paradise. I'll have them all listed and linked down in the description box below. But I just wanted to see the differences between these pads. I have just gotten them, so I wanted to use them up. And I took my solid hot foil plated background here, cut it down a little bit for a mat. And then one of the layers for the flowers, I die cut from the center. When I go to put my better pressed foiled image on the top of that, you'd never know that there's a piece missing in there. It's one of the ways that I like to get the most use out of specialty cardstocks. There's no point in cutting into a second piece if that part that's covered is going to be wasted anyways. I could even have taken that and die cut a sentiment out of it as well. Once again, I didn't really 
think about what I was going to do for a sentiment for this one. I just wanted to try to play with these plates and, or this plate and get some ideas out of my head and see them in reality. So while my layers on my card base are, glue, are drying, I'm gluing the flower together and I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes. Now, I the last time I did these Cloud9 images with a foiled image, I loved it. This time, I like it, but I don't love it as much as the last one. And maybe it's that I use too many colors or not whatnot. I like the flower on here, but I actually think that foiled background is just beautiful on its own. And it almost seemed like it didn't actually need an extra element on it. To clean off that grip mat, I just used a baby wipe. And you can see that some of the pigment ink from those Cloud9 pads stained it. That grip mat is like a big solid stamp. Some things are going to stain it. It's still going to work totally fine. And I'm not really that worried about it. But it's really easy to clean off with just a baby wipe. You could also use just a wet cloth. I have a sentiment here that I created in one of my last Better Press videos. It's just a foiled sentiment that's done with that same foil. So I just put that on the bottom of the card there. So here is the one that has the foiling and the Better Press combined. And here is the version that I did off screen. So I did that same foiling, but I did it in the bottom right side. And instead of using the black Better Press ink for it, I used that Hickory Smoke again. And I like it so much better. The, I love the black image of this background, but for this technique that I was doing, the sentiment kind of got lost and it was a little bit light. So by doing it in the gray, you get the best of both worlds. In my opinion, it doesn't deflect from the sentiment. And then I'm taking that other flower that I created and putting that on there as a nice bright element. I like the combination of the two and I want to play with that idea a little bit more in future cards. Um, but for a first attempt, I really like these two together, the foiling as well as the better press. For the center of the flower, I'm just taking some stickles and dotting it in the center just to add a touch of sparkle and letting that dry for a few minutes. Once that has completely dried, here is the finished card. Again, I love the combination of the better press and the foiling together on the same card. And I also love the bright element of the flower. Here is the foiled one with the flower done with the interference ink and I always love the sparkle that you get from foiled backgrounds. I think the foiling is just so beautiful and that background creates such a crisp foiled image as well. The second card again my favorite I think it just looks like a quilt it's got so much dimension to it and I love how these better press better press plates look when they're embossed but I really love how this plate looks with it when it's embossed as well as inked. And then we go to the first card that was done, just the traditional better pressed image, but done with the hickory smoke ink, and then just a simple floral image on the top of that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this gives you some ideas and some inspiration for using your press plates and getting as much use as possible with them. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope you have a fantastic day.